Morning gang, it's Saturday the 28th of February 2015. Just uh, before we start, if you're watching the show live, I, th I think there might be a little bit of a glitch on the sound today. I'm not sure. The music was kind of going a little bit funny now and again. So if it is, sorry about that. If you're watching the recorded show, you won't, uh, uh, it'll all be perfect. As you, unlike my skin. You know, which falls off by the... I'm sure I've got leprosy. Bits just fall off all over the place. <laughs> I was listening to a friend of mine um, last night on the radio, LBC, Steve Allen is on. And he was talking about these uh, uh, diet pills and that. You must have seen them on the internet. There's always some new website or something trying to sell diet pills. And he said, what do you think's going to happen? You know, you're going to take one at night. And then you wake up in the morning and the weight's fallen off. Where do you think it's going to go? It's going to be next to you in the bed, isn't it? There's going to be a great mound of fat in the bed. Either that or, or, or it's your wife or husband. <laughs> Uh, already messages are pouring in to these to these purpose built wireless and television studios today, boys and girls. Good morning. First message of the day was from da, 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 Anne McCabe, who informs me a very special birthday today. That's coming up in a minute. Don't get too excited. Uh, second message of the day was from Matt Martins. Good morning, Matt, who we're going to be chatting to on um, on the uh, uh, phone very shortly this, uh, this morning. Matt is in Canada, where it is. We we'll get a weather report from Matt because it's very, very cold there, apparently. <laughs> ah, it's not cold like it is here in Canada. Oh, no. It's like 10 to 100 times worse. Uh, or I might need my calculator to work that out. Uh, third message from Wendy. Good morning, Wendy. Fourth message from Daniel. Good morning, Daniel. And it's everyone's there already. How fabulous is that? Marvellous. So let's just do this little birthday. Um, my dear sister informs me that if my nan was still alive, Nanny Hayes. Uh, oh, I haven't got a picture of her anywhere. Let me see. I have I got one up there somewhere? Now, where is... I've got one. Where's my... Just a second. I'll show you a picture of my nan. One minute. Where is it? Nan, where are you, dear? Nan! Christopher, you naughty boy! Oh, there it is, there it is. It's a bit small, this. And it's behind a glass... Oh! It's behind a glass, um... thing, so it might shine a bit. I don't know, in the light. Let's see if you can see. Oh, yeah, you can see that. Uh, she's the one right in the middle. Can you see that? The one that's my Nanny Hayes. And that on the... On that side's my... Where is that? That's... Hold on a minute can't see from it. Yes, that's Auntie Brenda on that side. No, no, that's Auntie Brenda there. There's Nanny Hayes in the middle. And there's Mum on the end here. And my Nan would have been 110 years old, said my sister. If she was still here. Bless her heart. I'll put you there today, Nan. Put you right next to me there. And it's funny, it is funny, my sister does watch part of the show. I don't think she stays for the whole show. You know, she, she she hasn't got the um, attention span, unfortunately. You know, my sister's one of the so a, a fan of soaps and daytime television. You know, for for her to concentrate for more than a couple of minutes on anything is just just impossible. Especially, and it's worse when you take her photo, right? Because she will not keep still. Yeah, all right, just gonna do the photo now, and then suddenly her head will swing round. <laughs> A bit like that thing on The Exorcist, you know. She goes, don't do it. Oh, remember that thing on The Exorcist where the head swings up? Your mother... And then she says something, doesn't she? Your mother... And she says something. Yeah, my sister's like that. You take the photo. Here we go, shall. And then suddenly... Where you look? And then she starts screaming at one of the children. You know, who are now uh, coming up to 18, 25 and 30. She still scratches at them. Gary! Gary! <laughs> oh, hang on, it's a bit early with that. One second, one second. Now, where do we get to my sister? Oh, yes. So she tells me that Nan was 100. And it's it's funny, Sharon, if you're still with us after, like, six minutes, you know, for Nan to be 110 years old, and it's strange, although Nan isn't here, you have taken her place because you actually look 110 years old, dear sister. Don't you, my darling, eh? <laughs> anyway, it is a birthday today. Apart from my nan, uh, uh, one of our youngest viewers, not the youngest, I don't think, but one of our young viewers, Brandon. 
uh, today on this Saturday, the 28th of February, 2015, is 19 years old. So happy birthday, Brandon. <laughs> Birthday, Brandon, a loyal, loyal, respected viewer. He often puts little comments after the short videos that we do, don't you? Eh? I did think I was going to give those up for Lent, but I don't think I'm going to do that. In fact, a, a suggestion, a suggestion, boys and girls. I don't know if I can fit this in, but I might, I might try it if you're interested. That this will involve you sending an email saying, yes, that's a good idea, or no, I won't be there. Depends how many come in. OK, now you were talking about a Wednesday night show. Not possible now. All right. Not possible now because I have a new Wednesday job, although it's every other week. Every other week, I'm going to be doing a little quiz night in uh, the, a place called the King's Head in Islington. And just a minute, the first one. Oh, it's my it's my um, picture. Someone drew me Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Yeah. Poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. That one wants to get her man. That do I help them? Yes, indeed. Anyway, um, on what is it now? March. Oh, hang on. Twenty-five was it? That's it. Yes. March twenty-fifth. I'm doing this quiz night at um, a place called the Ain the King's Head Theatre Bar in Islington. Now, they were thinking of having a karaoke quiz night, but quite honestly, I went down there and I, you know, went in there. And as soon as I looked in there, I thought, oh, no, these are not karaoke people. Far too up their own arses, to be honest. Far too up their own arses. So, <laughs> so we won't be doing that there. But I'm going to be doing a quiz night there. I think that'll work. So won't be able to do a Wednesday. But is... <laughs> And this is probably going to be too late. How would Wednesday morning at 1 a.m. sound for a, a little bit of a late night talk show? Are you even going to be awake at that time? So that's like Tuesday night, yeah? Tuesday night, Wednesday morning at 1 a.m. Would, would you be around for a little chat show at that time? I just wondered. If you could send us in an email and let me know, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, all right? Then I will consider doing that, sort of Tuesday night. Maybe we'll just try one. Tuesday night, 1 a.m. How about a, like, an, an hour-long uh, late-night chat show where you can call in? Is that a good idea or too late? Let me know, please. Chris uh, on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, I must say, I didn't get up till 10.45 this morning. <gasps> oh, It was a, a very late night last night. Very, very successful night. Um, we've started doing karaoke at a place called Central Station in Islington almost every Friday. Hang on a minute, let me just check this again. Yes. Uh, th sort of three or four five Fridays out of four or five if you see what I mean. So one one Friday a month, I can't do it. But yes, we've started doing that. And instant success, well, not instant, th about four, we've done four now, and it's built up really quickly, which is unusual. So I'm quite pleased about that Friday night. Uh, but, <laughs> and I'm not moaning about this, but it was so good that they extended me last night from one thirty to 3. Oh, well, they, they, they pay you, so that's quite nice. But left me rather tired when I got in. I think I got to bed eventually about five o'clock in the morning and uh, I'm up again, usually at nine, but I didn't wake up till 10.45 this morning and I've rushed around. My poor little feet barely touched the ground as I rushed around having my breakfast and, and preparing for this globally renowned, globally renowned, highly sought after talk show that goes all over the world by satellites and bits of wire. How does it happen? How is it that I'm coming into your house on a pair of old wires? One day, you know, we will have holographic television. I will be actually be able to stand in or sit in the living room with you. We could all be sitting here, friends, and touching each other and kissing and kissing in the back row on the movie on a Saturday night with you and just you. Just, not anyone else. Just you because you're a special person. I'm special needs and you're special. And that's it. Um, good. 
uh, before, just before we go to Matt, oh, I've got my dinner in the oven as well. I've got my dinner in the slow cooker as well. I love my slow cooker. Have you got one? Oh, it's fantastic. So last night I came in, uh, got home about, it was about half past four, um, chopped up the carrots, the peas. Un- I'm so lazy with onions now because you can buy these packets of onions, can't you, that are already chopped up. So oh, here comes, here comes the Saturday sneeze. Here it comes every week. <coughs> every week without fail, it's a Saturday sneeze. <coughs> oh. Oh, gosh. Every single week that happens, doesn't it, now? Um, yes, uh, I've got these packets of onions, and you buy, they're about 50 pence a packet or something, which is, isn't dear. A lot cheaper even to buy them singly and chop them up. But then you're and you start crying and all that. And I've tried everything, glasses, masks, everything, and I still end up in floods of tears. So I buy these packets of onions, 50 pence, put them in there. Um, some roast onion gravy, sprinkled all that in there. Uh, what else did we put in there? Carrots. Put the lid on, bit of water, and that's been bubbling all, all night. And uh, this morning I get up and put my, my corn cubes in because they don't need to go in for long. Actually, I put them in for too long anyway. They only need to go in for half an hour, if that, maybe 20 minutes. But I put them in about 10 and I'll be having dinner at about... Half past one, two o'clock this afternoon. So I'm quite looking forward to that. So that's 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 on the slow cooker, quietly bubbling away. I'm hoping that best friend Ron will come over, maybe with his other half today, Andy, who who are no doubt sit there quietly while while uh, while Ronnie gets more angry over something else. I mean, I did see on the, on the did you see on that news with that uh, jihadi John, whose name is Mohammed, isn't it? It's Mohammed now. His real name, so it should now be called Jihadi Mo. Jihadi Mo, he went to anger, he's supposed to have gone to anger management courses, didn't he, or something, when he was at school? Well, I think my friend Ron should go to one of those, dear. Oh, he's always moaning about something. Do you know, you go around the house, he's barely got time to talk to you because he's on the phone complaining about something else. Now, what was it this week? Oh, yes, so he's got a new washing machine. The old washing machine kept going wrong. Always going wrong. So he got, he, he did not, he, 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 he um, and how, I don't understand how he can have so much go wrong in his sad, pathetic life. I really don't understand it. So uh, eventually, Indesit got fed up with him, I think, and sent him a new one, much bigger, all electronic. Guess what? Within about three washes, it had gone wrong. Leaking. I think it was leaking. Can't remember, like, leaking. So one bloke came round, he said, oh, yeah, that's it. And he pulled out this ball of rubber. And, he said, and Ronnie said, well, what's that? He said, well, they must have left it in doing manufacture. And Ron said, it's not that. I'm sure it's not that. Anyway, this, this bloke went and then he put the washing machine on again and same problem. Round came another one. So it was washing machines this week. Oh, I think he overloads it. He overloads the washing machine. You know, when he puts the washing in the machine, for example, a, a sheet... You know, like a normal sheet or something like that. He folds it up and puts it in like that. I'm sure that's not good for the... I just stuff all mine in, didn't you? Just shove it all in there and that's it. And it's hanging out on the line at the moment, actually. I hope it doesn't rain. I hate that when it rains. And, and that's the other thing. He's got his washing machine on all the time. Oh, it's not a joke. Two times a day, minimum. Washing things all the time. And if he brings something out of the washing machine, right... And it doesn't look like it's clean enough. He puts it on again. Like it's dirty. He's terrified of bacteria and viruses. Terrified. And he is a live walking bacteria himself. That's what he is. So there we are. Now let's do some uh, messages. Good morning to Kieran who joins us this morning. Hi Chris, sorry I'm a bit late. Have we had the story about Katie the cat yet? No, that's coming up next. Worry not, I have a story about my cat for you. Um... Wendy says, you are a bit crackly occasionally. Sounds like a loose wire. No, not a loose wire. It's the computer. Um, I've noticed when I do uh, a virus scan, which I do a couple of times a week, it, 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 the, the, after a while, the processor goes up to 100% and doesn't come down off that until you restart the machine. So I think there's something wrong. I think what I might do, I don't know if I have time to do it today, I might um, uh, un 
what's the word? Undo the virus. Uh, uninstall the virus thing. All of it. Restart the machine and reinstall it. And I think that will probably cure the problem. I hope it will. But I am aware there's a bit of a glitch on there today, which happens sometimes when I'm, when I'm working, if I'm playing music, and it's so annoying. Where, doop, like A little bit like that. You know, you don't lose it completely. But, um, yeah, that does happen. So sorry about that. Those of you watching a live show might be getting a little bit of a glitch today. If you're watching or listening to the recording, no glitch. Perfect as always, dear. Uh, Anne says, Chris, do you think you might have hay fever? I don't know. I mean, what in this time, in uh, at this point of the year, would you have fa hay fever at this point of the year, Anne? I, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that every time I come in this office on a Saturday, it doesn't happen during the week. On a Saturday, I start sneezing. I've put the air conditioning on there because it's a bit hot in here. One minute. Have you got air conditioning in your house, Anne? Let me just put it down to 18 degrees. I like it nice and cool. I'm a bit hot headed. Yes. Um, Anne said she'd like the late night chat show. Oh, you could call in, Anne, couldn't you? You could call in. I had Weetabix this morning. Haven't had it in years, but it tastes like wallpaper paste. <laughs> Why are you eating wallpaper taste, darling? You must try something better than that. <laughs> um, Daniel says, are you having a laugh? I find it hard to stay awake at midday listening to you. I beg your pardon. And Daniel wants to know what I gave up for Lent. I've done that already a couple of shows ago, Daniel. Do try and keep up with us all, dear. I know you're getting older and you're forgetting what goes on around you. I mean, I'm surprised you even remember my name this morning. Can you still operate Skype? Christ, what did you give up for Lent? That was two weeks ago. Get with it. Look at your calendar. Lent started ages ago. It's, oh, we don't do it. Don't give up something now. Too late, mate. Too late. It's too late. Jesus didn't start walking to be, you know, uh, walking to the cross late, did he? Would you would you be late? I bet you wouldn't be late walking to a plane that's about to take you to Ibiza with all your drunk mates, would it? You know, we'll take more care of you on the Ryanair. Because Daniel goes Ryanair and EasyJet, didn't you, Daniel? Eh? Oh, can you just imagine that? The, the gates open and they all run for the seats, didn't they? Oh, Daniel's got a bag in each hand. <laughs> As he comes down with the family. Get on that Ryanair plane. <laughs> Move the discs. What discs? Oh, are they in your way? Sorry. <laughs> I've been doing CDs for people this week. So, I must tell you... Oh, Kieran wants to talk as well. Kieran says, you're allergic to your 10 million viewers. Is that what it is? Oh, I'm not allergic to you. Not allergic to you at all. Why would I be allergic to 10 million viewers? Just a few little friends round on a Saturday morning. That's all I ask for. It's not too much to ask for, is it? In, in this sad, lonely, pathetic life that I live. Eh, lead? Anyway, so Katie the cat story. Katie the cat story. So the other night, came back from work. Right? Uh, I think it was a Wednesday. So I'm, quite, I'm, I'm home quite early on a Wednesday night from work. Uh, or Wednesday morning from work. And opened the door. And usually cat comes straight down. Uh, she, you, you hear like a thud. Uh, no, that's not. That's, that's, a, that's not. That's a bit sharp, that sound. It, it wasn't like that. It, like a thud. Like that, yeah. You hear like a thud as she jumps from the chair down onto the floor. And she comes over and goes, meow, meow, meow. But, so I open the door, close the door, nothing. That's all right. I call for you, though. Katie. Katie. Katie, where are you, Katie? And then she said, meow! A different meow. I thought, oh, don't say there's something wrong with a cat. Come on, girl. Meow! And I looked down at her cat bowl, which was empty. But rather unusually, it was completely empty. There, there were no, like, she usually leaves bits in there. I don't know why that is. She leaves bits in there. So I immediately went to the cupboard. And as I went to the cupboard, she's walking, and she hissed at me. <laughs> that cat, my own cat, hissed at me. <laughs> like that she was. Well, what's wrong with you then? Uh, anyway, so I ignored her. And I put some food in the bowl. Right? And I went to stroke her. She went straight over and started munching away. Went, went to stroke her. <laughs> no, she didn't hiss at me. Okay? So her head is in the bowl. 
Oh no, don't look at my bald spot. Please don't look at that. One minute, let me cover it up. So, her head's in the bowl. And <coughs> what on earth's wrong with her, I thought. You know, she seemed to be eating. She weren't meowing now. Anyway, I turned around. And I walked over to the other side of the kitchen, put the kettle on to make myself a cup of tea before I go to bed. And I drink decaffeinated tea before I go to bed. Right? Because I found that if I, if I drink too much normal tea before I go to bed... Oh, what's that now? Oh, someone else is here. 3D... Is that you? 3D focus? Oh, it's Jonathan. Long time... Oh, Jonathan, uh, you, you want to use another Skype, Jonathan? Oh, this, he sent me on my, on my other Skype. You know the one that we used to use? Okay, Jonathan, can you add this new Skype to your thing? It's United Kingdom Talk. All right, you want to use United Kingdom Talk. So if you add United Kingdom Talk to your Skype, that's the one we use now for the show. I do open this sometimes in case people have fallen through the net, as indeed you have, Jonathan, okay? He says, morning, Chris. It's a long, it's Jonathan, long time since I caught the live show, but I always watch the recordings. Uh, did you see the story about the blue, blue, black and blue dress? No, I didn't, actually. Didn't see that. Didn't see that. Someone tell me what that's about, please. Or, oh, Jonathan, tell me what that's about. But add me first on Skype username United Kingdom Talk, OK? Right, back to the story about Katie the Cat. And I, 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 so I'm making my cup of tea. Uh, decaffeinated tea. Decaffeinated just before bed. And um, I turned around, and there, on the kitchen worktop, is another cat. Beautiful cat it was. Now, let me see if I've got a picture of it. No, I haven't. Oh, damn, I haven't got a picture of the other cat to show you. Oh, what a shame. But it, it, it was, it was um, like a very pale-coloured thing. It looked like a boy cat, because the boy cats have got bigger faces. You can tell. I know that sounds stupid, but you can actually tell. This cat had a, a, quite a big face. And, um, and I'm like, who are you? <laughs> and then, it, and then I, it clicked to me why Katie was so unhappy. How had this cat got into the house? <clears throat> anyway, I was a little bit worried about this. You know, because you don't know what another cat's like. You get friendly cats. Cats are all di- just like dogs. They're all different. You get friendly cats and you get right miserable cats. I had a cat called Tiny for years and years. She was a little bit standoffish. She didn't really like to be picked up and stroked too much. You know, she liked to keep herself to herself. You know, that, that's throughout her entire life. But Katie is a very friendly cat. So when she starts hissing and moaning, you know there's something wrong, yeah? And, anyway, so I, I, I gently approached this, this pussy cat with my hand, and it came, to, came towards me to be stroked, I suppose. So I thought, okay, well, this one's all right. But I thought, well, I won't risk picking it up. So I quickly picked it up by the scruff of the neck. Now, I was telling my sister this, and she thinks that's really cruel. But if you go online... It tells you that this is quite acceptable way to pick a cat up by the scruff of the neck because you don't know what it's like. It might start lashing out and all that. And you don't know what's, what's underneath those cat claws, dear. Filth and disgustingness. That's what's underneath cat's claws. Filth and disgustingness. So I picked her up by the scruff of the neck, opened the door and um, kindly put her out. I didn't throw her, just put her on the ground. At which point my cat took off and chased her away. <coughs> The noise! <coughs> meow! <coughs> meow! So off they went. So I'm standing there looking at this cat. And my cat is now standing there looking at this cat as well. <laughs> and then... And then my cat turned round and started hissing at me. And I'm like, what on earth's wrong? And then she backed off. And she's screaming at me, meow, meow, really loud. And we're talking now, probably our past one in the morning. For, oh, my God, shut up, Katie. You're going to wake all the neighbours up, dear. What will they think's going on in it? They might have thought I'd suddenly become Chinese and was about to chop her up and put her in a pot. That Don't laugh. That's what they do in China. Some awful videos on YouTube. 
dreadful, dreadful videos about what they do to cats in China. Mind you, and I've said before, because me vegetarian, it's no different to what you do in chickens. Chickens and lambs and things like that. It's no different. In my mind, it's no different. OK, but nevertheless, that's what the Chinese eat cats. They do. And dogs. Anyway, so um, I thought, well, I, I mean, I backed off. I backed off. I thought she was going to attack me. And I took a step forward and she went into attack mode. I could say, oh, she's going to go for me in a minute. What have I done? You know, I've just chucked the other cat out. Anyway, so I thought no more. I, you know, I'm, I'm carefully now tiptoeing around the cat. She is literally in a corner, like, you know, looking, looking like she's going to attack me and screaming at me, screaming. Row! Row! Like that. I thought, well, sod you, I'm going to leave you alone. And I went to bed. I didn't go to bed. I came upstairs. I'm fired up. This complete computer, complete with, complete with glitches. Right? And I looked it up. Angry cat. What do you do with an angry cat? <clears throat> and it said, the last thing you should ever do with an angry cat is try and pick it up or stroke it. It wants to be left alone. It doesn't want to be touched. And you, and you must leave it alone. But, you know, carry on doing what you're doing. And if it carries on, you ignore it. You completely ignore the hissing and the spitting. And you just get on with what you're doing. Don't pay it any attention whatsoever. And it will find like a quiet spot wherever it is in the kitchen, uh, which, happen to be, which happens to be on a chair underneath a table. And don't look at it. Leave it under there. Just leave it alone. So that's what I did. And I went to bed and got up in the morning. And honestly, you get up in the morning, you open the door. And as I come in, she jumps down on the floor. Meow. Meow. Like nothing had ever happened. But she, she like blamed me for the fact that the cat was here. She's supposed to be guarding that cat flap so other cats can't come in. Stupid cow. Stupid woman. I thought she'd become a member of ISIS for one minute. And she was about to do something terrible to me. Maybe hold me up as a hostage or something like that. Evil cat. <laughs> so that's the Katie stuff. She was absolutely... She was livid. My cat was livid on Wednesday morning. She was absolutely fuming. Real! Real! <laughs> Oh, good old Katie the cat. <coughs> <coughs> and, of course, as I say, uh, in the morning, got up about nine o'clock. I usually get up about nine o'clock in the morning. And she was completely normal, like nothing ever happened. Isn't that strange? Good old Katie the cat. Uh, Daniel says, the best thing to do with an angry cat is to have them put down. Oh, you're a vile person, aren't you? Absolutely vile. Let's go to... Um, uh, the telephone then, and Matt is on the line from Canada. A very good morning to you, Matt. And a very good morning to you, sir. How are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Matt. Yes, I will uh, try and keep the Canadian accent if I can. Usually when I'm talking to somebody British or from another country, I do tend to adapt to the accent there. Oh, well, you, I can hear you trying to adapt to the accent. I'm not quite sure you're pulling it off, Matt. No, likely not, mate. I'm going to try and keep the, to the Canadian accent if I can. <laughs> have you got have, have you got any pets here? Uh, you know, unfortunately not, but I do come from a home of uh, people that do enjoy dogs, and they did have about 10 uh, dogs, and we lived on a farm, and it was quite massive, to be honest with you. Nasty. Yeah. Oh, go on. And uh, we had all kinds. We had these big ones, right, called a English Mastiff. I don't know if you've seen those. Yes, yes. And, and they went to as small as like a little Dasha, just a little tiny wiener dog. Right. Fabulous. And uh, I must admit, it was a lot of work. We did enjoy hanging out with them, you know, stroking them. They'd come sit with you on the couch, even these big, massive ones, to be honest. Oh. Yeah, it was lovely, mate. Ah, oh, my mate had uh, he had a great big old Rottweiler once. That was ever oh, so. Yeah. It was ever so friendly. The trouble is, it was really heavy. And you you would go in, might be laying on the settee, and this thing would just jump on you and want <laughs> to be hugged. But it was so heavy, you could barely breathe. <laughs> yeah, well, isn't that sad? I mean, that's the truth. They try and think that they're humans. To be honest with you, isn't that the truth? Yeah. Oh, it is absolutely. But the the cats when they're angry, oh, they they're scary. 
Yeah, it's I've scary. seen them, mate. You don't want to deal with them. No, no. I mean, literally, you're supposed to just leave them alone and let them get on with it until they until they've calmed down. But in the, it was like nothing ever happened in the morning. Wow, isn't that amazing? Well, obviously, that's all she needed at that point, just a little bit of space, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to let you know, boys and girls, uh, when, when I'm on a call, I can't take it. Well, I can take another one, but I, I, I pref- unless it's to do with what we're talking about, I prefer to talk to one to one person. So I did see someone trying to call in then from a mobile. Um, you can try again when, when we finish chatting away to our good friend in Canada, where I gather it's very cold at the moment. Is that right, Matt? Yes, it is quite cold, but to be honest, at the moment, we are having a heat wave, dear. It is minus 18 Celsius, but with the wind, only minus 28. A heat wave, minus 18. Is that centigrade? That's centigrade, mate, yeah. God. Yeah, so, I think you should come on over, Chris. It's no, going to be rather I don't enjoyable. Think so. I don't think so. But I wonder, um, <clears throat> like, when I was in New York a couple of years ago for the Barry Manilow concert, the wind that was coming through there, because we had snow as well, it was so cold. And I wonder, is is that because of the buildings? Do you see what I mean? Because the wind seemed to channel through these buildings. And you, as soon as you stepped out of the hotel, it felt like your ears were going to drop off. Yeah, absolutely. I find that's the case, mate. You can be in the middle of a field here in Canada in wintertime, and you can be in the middle of, of downtown Winnipeg, where I am, and it's just a complete difference it just gets like you say channeled in there and sometimes if you don't watch yourself mate you're going to get blown away honestly so it's it's worse in the city than it is in a country would you say yeah yeah definitely it's just the way that the, the wind whips at you it's kind of forced at you if you know what i mean ah uh, yeah 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 through the buildings and what have you have you got exactly. what a, have you got a special hat that covers your ears or anything matt Yes, I've got a rather large toque and it, luckily it does a very nice job at about minus 45 it's built for that what's it called uh, it's called a toque, T-O-U-C-Q-E, I believe. T-O-U-C-Q-U-E? Toque. Something like that. That should do an autocorrect if that's a misspelling. T-O... A, is it a knitted thing? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Typically, the knit cap is of simple... Tam- Let me have a look at that. Let's see what it is. Oh, that looks like more, more, more like a bobble hat to me. <laughs> Is that, I thought you might have, you know those ones that the pilots have that go down over your ears? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, it's no good if you're listening to people. No, that's <laughs> the sad part of it. <laughs> I don't think I'd like to live. I mean, it is permanently minus 20 in Canada, isn't it? You don't have any warm weather at all, do you there? Well, to be honest, mate, let's say, for example, someone were to come from the UK, I'd only recommend coming usually June to August, where it's actually quite balmy here, about plus 30, actually. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too bad. 30, uh, 30 60, so that's about 90 Fahrenheit, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what would you do in the, in the winter months like you are? Do, does, does the things just carry on as normal? Like when we have snow here in the UK, everything just comes to an abrupt halt. We can't yeah. deal with it. <clears throat> and a, here in Canada, it's definitely a big difference as far as that goes, because I guess since it's been happening, you know, since the beginning of time, they have really adapted to what the snow is like and the, the cold temperatures. They have all these big pieces of machinery out. The airports go on 24-7, not a problem. Everything works as it should. It just carries on. And what about yeah. like the roads? Now, um, I'm, I'm very wary driving on iced roads and things like that. I tend to slide the car even when I'm going slow. Um, do they gravel all the roads or how does that work? Yeah, basically they use a salt and sand mixture on most of the roads. To be honest, we do get a bit of the black ice once in a while, but thankfully uh, in Canada, they do always have these snow tires, right? And I'm not sure if that's something they offer there, but it's kind of like a softer rubber so that when you are on this ice and the snow, you actually get quite good handling, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so we can get winter tires here, um, but someone told me they're useless on ice, so that's not right, no? Uh, well, basically, if you do find yourself with a lot of ice, which normally, I mean, in Canada, as I say, with the salt and sand mixture, there's not too bad for the ice. But um, if you, you find you're dealing with a lot of ice, you can actually get um, these little pieces of metal inserted into your, your tires. And that's something that a lot of people that I know do as well. Oh, I don't think... I've, I've never seen that here. Like, 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 like little... um. A bit like football boots. Yeah, kind of like that. Just a, a very small chunk of metal, and there's a whole bunch of them, and there's a machine that they use, and they will, like, insert them around just the, the outer edges, and it works perfectly. Ah, okay. Do, do you have two sets of tyres, then, for your car? Yeah, generally one for summer and one for winter, <clears throat> yeah. 
And where do you keep them then? In, in the garage? Yeah, just in a garage or in a storage locker, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's the weather like in Bracknell today? Uh, it's about 10 degrees outside. It's all right. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, you can't complain, eh? No, no, we've had a few. Um, once again, I don't think we've had a particularly bad winter. We're, we're coming towards the end of it now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we had a couple of days of snow, literally two days worth. And oh. even then, certainly where I am, we don't get it much here at all. Last week, last year, there was none at all. We didn't have a single flake of snow last year. Um, this year, we've had a little bit, but nothing really to write home about. But I did slide this year um, a few weeks ago, and I think it was a Saturday, actually. Uh, we had stones and snow come down at the same time. Oh. Uh, and there was a lot of them. And then I, I went to drive... And I was coming down this hill, put, put the brake on, nothing. It wouldn't stop. Oh, um, my God. So I tried a few times steering into it, and no, it wasn't happening. So what I, I was going very slow. I mean, really slow, six or seven miles an hour. But this car in front of me, I saw I was getting closer and closer, and this car wasn't stopping. So I turned to the left, and the uh, curb stopped me. Wow. Yeah, so I was lucky the curb was there, really. But uh, I, I really hate driving on anything like that. Anything exciting happening in your life, uh, Matt? Have you uh, been married now for a couple moment. of years? Well, Is it a couple of years you've been married for now? I've been married since October 5th of 2013. So, yeah, I guess about a year and a half now. Yep, see, I remember. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, it's been going good so far. We're working on uh, starting a family now, so that's pretty exciting. Oh, yes. Anything happening yet? Uh, so far, nothing yet, but we are hoping that if we do have one, it's not going to be twins. My sister recently just had twins, and oh, let me tell you, what a nightmare. Why is that? <laughs> oh, apparently they are just hellions, and it's crazy. <laughs> I've just uh, had a text from my mate. Feel like death, losing my voice, so can't call in. Can you bring my lunch here? I'm serious. Oh, what a liberty. What? Is he having a laugh? Can you bring my lunch here? That's like 10 minutes up the road. Oh, that's unacceptable. That is out of call, dear me. You run around after these people, don't you? Well, and here he <laughs> thought he should do his own show. <laughs> well, he keeps threatening to come in here one week and do a whole hour on his own. <laughs> I don't think there'd be anyone left. He'd just upset everyone in the end. That'd be it. United Kingdom <clears throat> talk would have to pack right up. It would. And you've yeah. got your um, you've got your new United Kingdom talk iPhone case, one of only. Well, I did in, I did enjoy it, mate. Thank you very much for sending that. Are you using it? Have people asked what it is? Yes, several people have said, "What is on the back of your phone?" And I did again. It's just another way to advertise the show. You tell them about it. You say, "Give my phone a ring." Listen to the voice, and <laughs> it all comes together in a beautiful package. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so I was gonna gonna ask you, Chris. Have you heard that the the Queen just recently opened the High Commission in the uh, the what is it called downtown London? Anyhow, there is the Canada High Commission, and if you ever go around there, right, you'll see the Canadian Mounted Police dressed in red. Have you seen this? No, I haven't. No, no, this hasn't. I haven't seen this on our news. Well, <laughs> I think you're not listening to the right news, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the BBC News 24 on all the time. Oh, you, you don't, do you get News 24? Do you get um, BBC World? Do you get that? Yes, that's right. We get the World Service. Tell here, me, yeah. on the news there, <clears throat> right, when you get the BBC News, is it like this big studio and this camera goes around like that, right around the studio? I want one of those. And there's all these people working in the background. Yeah, ever so busy, aren't they? Oh, yeah, it looks quite busy, posh, busy, busy. Do you think they're actually doing anything or is it all for the camera? <laughs> I think it's all for the camera. Do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, People definitely. going up and down that spiral staircase. And I want that. I want to be sitting here doing my show and there's all this busyness going on around me. But there's only me. That's it. What? Me up all here, you... the cat downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, all you need at this point is a couple of volunteers and you'll be good to go. Get some people in Bracknell, get them together, tell them you're going to give them tea <laughs> afterwards and that's all they need. <laughs> My nephew, Jimmy, is with us this morning. Good morning, Jimmy. I shall be with you in 24 hours' time. I'm pleased to say, because I'm going up north, um, my niece, Tracy, has got a uh, little girl's got a christening. So I'm going up there um, 
uh, a little bit later on today. And uh, Jimmy has now said, can you bring my lunch as well? Well, I think it might be a bit cold when I get up there, Jim. Jimmy. And it's vegetarian, Jimmy. No dead animals. Vegetarian casserole. Thank you. No dead animals here. Eh? Have you gone? Oh, I'm still here. Oh, Definitely. thank God for that. I thought you died then, Matt. Please oh. don't die while I'm on air. You know what's happening here? It's getting, it's starting to get colder outside. Minus 18 is turning into minus 30, and the lines are freezing up. That's oh, what's happening here. Well, rather you than me, my good friend. Yeah, definitely. So, you you know, you were talking the other day about deja vu, right? Yes. And uh, I'm just going to let you know, because as you know, I was a DJ at one point, and uh, during that experience, there was a time where somebody had come up and asked me for a request, and it only seemed like 10 seconds later, and then the woman had come over and asked the request in the same way. How odd is that? She, no, she probably, they do. They, ca they come up, because they're so off their heads, they don't know what they're doing half the time now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they come up, and then two minutes later, they come up for the same record. And if it still doesn't go, oh, same song. And if they, still, if they still don't get it on very quickly, then they start sending their friends up one at a time to ask for the same record. But you're, 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 you know what's going on, because they think they're the first persons to ever have done this. Yeah, and the sad part is that that is what they think. They think that yeah. they are the DJ and you have to answer to their every will. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got to be honest with you, Matt. I'm not so much into the DJ now. I prefer to, much prefer doing karaoke and quiz nights because you get more um, uh, interaction with people doing that. I much, much prefer doing karaoke and quiz nights now. That's yeah, definitely. Good. Karaoke is, is, I mean, yeah, like you said, you get to really interact with people and it, oh, it's, I uh, it. I'm sure the nights probably go by much faster for you as well, really, hey? Oh, yes. very. I mean, last night, I was 9.30 to 1.30 last night. Well, right. So I started, you know, I am always start on time, bang on time, 9.30. Well, then I looked down at the clock and it was 11.40. And I'm like, where on earth did that two hours go? I can't wow. believe that. Wow, Two that's quite hours something. just disappeared. Oh, look at him. Look, he's sending more messages. Ronnie, I'm watching the show. Are you coming or not? People are taking a mick here, aren't they? <laughs> so are you coming? Answer on show as I'm watching. What a well, liberty. Yes, I'll liberty. bring your dinner over later. Don't worry. Bring your dinner over. Do you want a packet of rice as well? Please let me know. <laughs> 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 oh well chris the next time i'm in london we'll definitely have to uh, to get together i wouldn't mind coming to a karaoke sometime yeah it would be lovely lovely to have you come and sing a sing song yeah i love the crooner type music you know frank dean tony oh Michael. Yeah, yeah yeah matt monroe born yeah. free as free as the grass grows oh, and all those ones yes. yeah definitely yeah. uh you know chris you were talking this week about the self-service tills right yes um I have to say, they are definitely quite annoying. The, actually, I was just there yesterday trying to use one, and you try and have an onion, right? You, you go and you enter in this code, and it says, no, that, that that's not the correct, their correct code because apparently what you put on is too heavy, so you have to go through, and there's all these different codes. Have you ever had that when you're trying to enter in these stupid produce codes? Um, no. We, we just scan the thing. We haven't got put in numbers at all. And when you go to the checkout, there's like, if it's produce, like you say onions or grapes or, or carrots, you, you push a button and a picture of carrots and onions and apples comes up. I think here in the UK, we're not intelligent enough to put in a code or something like that. Can, <laughs> so, can, can you hear that noise? That's yeah, in the texting. That? Yes, please bring rice. <laughs> Christ almighty. Wow. Wow, that is a liberty. People, I tell you, it is a liberty. Oh, man, it's such a pleasure to talk to you after such a long time. Yes, as is you. You take uh, care of yourself, Chris. Have I, a great can day. Can I just suggest a name for your forthcoming baby when, when it starts being made? Yes, please. Yeah, Chris. Ah, lovely. I will definitely consider that. Thank please you consider it. It is because you are Catholic, am I right? <clears throat> uh, actually, no, I, I oh. am Protestant, but that's okay. Uh, Chris so is you're a Chris, fantastic but you're Christian. Protestant. Christian? Yes, yes. Christian Chris. That's all I'm saying. I don't huh. want to push you in that direction. Christian Chris, yeah? I will definitely accept that. Thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> and if so, I will send your child their very own iPhone, probably nine or ten case it'll be by then, will it? <laughs> definitely. And they will enjoy it. <laughs> Cheerio, Matt.
Cheerio, Chris. Thanks Take for care. calling. Bye bye now. Bye bye. We are Matt in a very, very cold Canada at the moment. Oh, we don't like cold. We really don't. Uh, good morning to Mark this morning, who's with us from London. Good morning, Mark, who's tuned in. Mark is one of our uh, karaoke singers and uh, sung a few songs last night. We went down very well. He does. My favourite song that he does is ACDC. Highway to Hell. Ah, ah, highway to Hell. And he starts breaking microphone stands over his knee and all that business, don't you, Mark? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Wendy says, I have to put in the car code on the self-service checkouts manually before now uh, when the code hasn't registered. Ah, so I don't know that, you see. Right, whoever that was trying to call in, you can try and call in now if you want, because uh, we have... Lines are now free, boys and girls. Lines are free. Uh, Wendy also says, you really do do uh, good cat impressions. <laughs> meow! Meow! <laughs> meow! Are you a cat calling in now, please? <laughs> Hi, Chris. It's Sean. Who's that? Hello, Sean. How are you? I'm good. Where are um, you, Sean? I'm at home. Where's that? I'm in Hertfordshire. With your whereabouts? I'm in, like, near Stevenage. OK, you're not in Hemel Hempstead? Nah. Hertfordshire. Oh, Stevenage. Um, are you in a little village or a town? I'm in a little... Well, it's a little, <laughs> little village, but um, it's now a, getting a bigger town. Is it like a village like on... Oh, what's that programme now? Uh, three old men. It's not on anymore. It, the theme music. What's that one? Oh, no. Oh gosh. Last of the summer wine. Is it a bit like that? Yeah. Are you an old person? You sound like you're no. very old, Sean. You've met me at the quiz night at the night of the van. Oh, isn't that funny? You just can't <laughs> tell how people sound on the phone, can you? I know, I do the same with my work colleagues. Eh? I do the same with my work colleagues. <laughs> Can you do, have you got a, a cat or anything like that? I do, and your cat impressions are brilliant. Oh, she, I, was, I was seriously scared of her. On sh when I came in from work and she started like, well, no, well, the other cat had gone, and then she turned, mm. directed her anger at me like it was my bloody fault. <laughs> oh, she's very, very scary. You try it now, go on, try it. No. I'll tell you one thing, actually, before I do the cat noise. Um, I had a cat called Sam, and some lovely idiot decided to poison it, and I found it a few hours later. I tried to get in there, and it, no joke, it would come really close to me, and then it hissed at me, and I was so scared, and I was like, it's my cat, yeah. and you're hissing at me. Going, yeah, yeah. I think they are very, very scared. Yeah, Lust of the summer wine. Thank you, Wendy. Um... <laughs> They, they're they very, very scary when they're angry, cats. I mean, they really but, are. Mm. Talking about that dress that we were, um, that you had on... Oh, the yes. Now, earlier. can I just read out what... Um, uh, Jonathan yep. just sent something in about the dress, and then we can talk about that. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> where is it now? Um, Jonathan, where are you gone, Jonathan? Jonathan, there it is. Jonathan says... Uh, the story was big news yesterday. Someone had made a dress that some people see as a different colour, either black and blue or white and gold. I see black and blue. What do you see? Well, well I've got a picture. Funny, oh, wait, hang on. No, he sent me a picture of it. Hang on a minute. Uh, and then it says... I said, uh, also, your cat story reminds me of what happened to me. I woke up at 3am and entered my pitch black lounge and all of a sudden a random moggy jumped off onto the sofa onto me. I've never jumped so much in my life. It must have sneaked through the open window. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, have a look at the dress. So I'm just going to have a look at that dress now. Do you know about this then? Um... You know, I found out the other day and I see what you see, blue and black. Blue and black. Well, let's have a look. OK. Right, so in the Daily Mail, in female yesterday, there's a picture of, on the left, there's three people. There's a bloke in a, in a kilt. There's a lady in, like, a wedding gown. And on the left is a woman in a blue and black dress. That is blue and black. It is. It's all to do with the lighting. Someone's taken a picture of it when it's light, and it's obviously made people think, oh, it's white and gold. White and gold? Well, hang on a minute. Then there's the bride. 
And she's got a white dress on. Kardashian got involved as well. She's got a white dress on. Or is that the same dress, but it looks white? Yeah, it's the same dress, but it's all to do with the lighting. What, one's got a blue and white one on? Well, that is the yeah, weirdest thing, isn't it? Hang on, let me just type, try something else. Blue, black dress. Let's see what happens. Let's just type that into Google, see if we can find it. Again. Optical illusion. Anyway, oh, that's better. BBC News site. You don't get better on that, do you? Um, Are there all people in that studio as well? How it's can that change colour like that? <laughs> God. It's weird. That is the weirdest thing. Well, I see blue and black. What do you see? I see blue and black. Do you? Yeah. I, I can just... Let me just bring up this picture. One minute. We can do that somehow. Uh, blue and black. Do you know, all the things I said I was going to talk about, we haven't had time to do again, have we? This always happens. Well, I'll tell you... Mm. Eh? What'd you say? I'll tell you one thing. Talking about... Because I, I saw one of your topics about the Toyota car. Yep. Have you heard with Red Nose Day that you can buy a nose for your car? Oh, yeah, loads of people have those. Yeah, and the the tight ones recycle the same one from last year. Do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> you see the same noses because they bring out a different one every year. They really do. But no, you, you, I will know if you bought the same nose out twice, you tight-fisted <laughs> people. Either buy another one or don't bother. That's what I say. Well, I've got a picture of the blue and black dress up there now. Um, and that's like on the right hand side, she's got this blue and black dress, right? On the left hand side, she's turned around, and yes, indeed, it's gold and white. But the colours are not even similar. How do they do that then? But I, you know what's weird? I'm looking at it on my iPod as you're showing it, and it still looks blue to me. I can see gold a bit, but it's light in it. It's got to be light. Can, are you seeing the same photo as me? So on the right, she's facing you, and on the left, she's turned yeah. around. Yeah. So you, to you, the one on the left looks blue. I can see blue and I can see it. It's got to be lighting issues. Wow. Right. Well, that looks gold to me. What's it look like to everyone else looking at that? Does that look blue or gold? <laughs> well, I was going to tell you about this new car. Um, uh, <clears throat> that's coming out, um, Sean. From Toyota... Right? And mm -hmm. it's hydrogen. Oh, wow. Yep, hydrogen car. Not cheap. It's going to be about £57,000, uh, $1,000, which is about £38,000. Brandon, you won't get a second-hand one yet because they're just coming out. It's it's from Toyota called the Mirai, Mirai, Mirai which is difficult to stay, try saying that, Mirai. M-I-R-A-I, -I, Mirai. Right? Yeah. And... <laughs> It's, they've had this um, s uh, professor scientist bloke talking about it, and he reckons a fuel source based on an element that's the most plentiful in the universe, hydrogen, contrast that to oil. Nations will kill to secure supplies of oil, which we've seen, haven't we? And we've yeah. seen that so much. <clears throat> it says, in a hydrogen fuel cell car, what this is, the car engine has... No moving parts at all. Oh, my God. So there's nothing to go wrong. This is the beauty of it. A car that in it emits nothing but water. The word smog will disappear from the dictionary uh, because we're entering a new age. And it says, number four, a car that's friendly to the consumer. Usually hydrogen cars are priced at hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but this car, we're talking about, um, about, like I say, about 40... I just about about thirty eight thousand pounds, which is still a lot of money, still an awful yeah. lot of money. But how much are they going to charge for this hydrogen? That's a thing. I mean, is mm. it going to be like twenty pence a litre? I don't know how it works. But it doesn't. It, looking at this thing, it doesn't seem to drive the car directly. Do you, do you see what I mean? It, yeah. It makes it turns something else to make electricity to push it along, and it's silent. Just like the electric cars, it's actually silent. How do they do that? I have no idea. I just heard some news, actually. Um, because of you were in Islington yesterday. Yes. Did you hear about the 15-year-old the who was on a, fight, uh, on a bike and got stabbed and died? 
On a bike? Yes, yes, yesterday. No, I didn't see that. Apparently a gang of females stabbed this 15-year-old boy on Carandon Road just last night. What was that, for his mobile phone or something, I suppose? Well, that's sorry, but that's really weird. Islington? On a bike. I'm supposed to be working there, going to work there. Do a little quiz night there in a few Wednesdays' time. I no. just had a look, like, what? Nowhere is safe, dear. Nowhere is safe. Isn't that awful? Someone be stabbed on his bike as he's cycling along. God's yeah. sake. Well, my dear... I've got dear, to say one little... Carry on, sorry. What else are you doing this weekend? Anything exciting and happening in your sad, lonely, pathetic life? Well, I'm cooking Italian tomato ch- um, chicken. Oh. I know how much you don't like chicken. I, I like I'm... chicken. Why, why are you using dead animals, darling? Why can't you go and buy a nice, some nice mushrooms? Or corn, or soya pieces. No dead animals, dear. <laughs> and, uh, and also, I've got to say a quick message for someone very special, because sadly she lost someone, and I'd like to say rest in peace, Auntie Staffy for Anne Cade. Is that it? Oh, still, yeah, that's I thought it. you might say a little bit more. I don't know what to say, because it's so oh. sad, because she died from breast cancer, and it's such... Right. I hate cancer, and I wish we could fight it. Yeah, don't we all? That's nice. I lost my aunt. I lost my grandma two years from um, pretty much every single cancer oh, that you could get, and she didn't even tell us. I only found out as soon as she died. Well, I th- I think it's all in the food and the air and the water. I'm sure it's all to do with all these bloody chemicals they keep adding to everything. Yeah, that's what I reckon. Well, nice to talk to you, young Sean. Have a lovely yeah, well, Saturday. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. Keep smiling. <laughs> we'll do. And I'll see you soon, hopefully, for another quiz night at the Mayflower. Marvellous. Would you listen to a show at one o'clock in the morning, or is that too late? I quite like the idea of that, because I'm quite a late-night person. I don't go to bed until at least two o'clock in the morning. One o'clock on a Tuesday, on a mon- uh, uh, sort of a, a Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. It is something I am considering, yes. It's a good idea. Yes. All right, see you later then, Sean. Cheerio. See you later. Bye, Chris. Bye. Bye-bye. There's one of our quiz players. He came along on a Tuesday night uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, thank you. Now, how are we doing for time? Oh, a couple of, couple of minutes. Um, Anne says, have you ever been to Ireland, Chris? Do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Uh, well, I did a St. I, I, I have done a couple of St. Patrick's Night. That's dedicated St. Patrick's Night. So it's not a job that I happen to be working on St. Patrick's. It's jobs that I've done on St. Patrick's Night and the last one I did was about 25 years ago. I swore I'd never do one again and the reason is what happens in a pub that puts on a St. Patrick's Night is that um, half the crowd want a normal night and the other half of the crowd want Irish music and you cannot win. So no, I don't do St. Patrick's Nights anymore. (laughs) Who's on the line now calling from London? Hello, Chris. It's Tony here. Tony Good morning, Power. Tony. I see you've just sent in a message saying it's pussy galore this morning, Chris. Pussy galore as well. Pussy yeah. galore, my poor cat. Meow. <laughs> well, actually, talk about cats meowing. Um, I looked out the window in the early hours of yesterday morning, and there were three foxes having a go at each other. Oh, were there? <laughs> yeah, over, <laughs> do- uh, um, over a box of Kentucky chicken. Now, do they attack? <laughs> Was it you, Chuck, the Kentucky out there, just to watch no, the I show? No, I just watched. I just looked out. I just looked out. You know, I looked out the window at him. It, you know, it was so amusing to watch the three of them at it, really. Now, you you are the perfect person to have called in at this point. Would you oh, like really? to tell us what is happening tonight on BBC One? On BBC One? Yes. Uh, I... I don't know, actually. Um, I don't watch a lot of television at night. Oh, do you come on, Tony! Don't disappoint me. What well, is what, it? What, what is? It? What is your biggest dream, Tony? We all know what your biggest dream is. <laughs> it's that to do with Eurovision, is it? Right. Okay. It could be. Yeah, because I know last night there there was the um, uh, the final of Eurosong Ireland, I, I believe, uh, and, and and they picked the Irish. MC for Eurovision. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a... It's a not not the Irish Molly. one, though. Not the Irish one. 
Uh, UK. Oh no, no, I've got it wrong. I've got it wrong. Just a minute. I thought I it was think tonight. We have. I think you're probably talking about the seventh of. of um, I am sorry. It's next April. week, isn't it? And they choose the UK entry, don't they? Have you got any? In, have you got any insider information for us, Tony? What I is going think to be? I might our have, song? but I'm not. I, I, I don't know, I'm not going to say anything. I'm, I'm keeping my mouth shut. Oh please! No. Is, is no, it going no. to be Kelly and Jason Prince? Huh? Is it going to be Kelly and Jason Prince? It's not. I can assure you, it's not going to be them two anyway. But um, but but I, I I tell you what though, I, I I've got um I've got an album coming out in um uh, at the end of March. It's called Eurovision Connections. Tell us more. It's, it's actually mm. coming out on the sorry on the thirty first of March, and and it's got all the um all the Eurovision classic um you know singers on there like the Linda Martins and the um. And uh, and and the Neve Cavaniers and and Sonia and all that lot are going to be what on song, there. What one did Linda Martin do? Why me? Was it? Yeah, why me? That Tony, was, could, could, could you give us a little a rendition of that song? Oh, I I'm, I'm not a very good singer, so, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not even going to try. Basically, is is it the case that you most... could probably sing it better yourself, Chris? Go on, have a go. Why go me? That's it. Yeah, go on then. La I, da I, da da I, da I, da. I can hear the old key in the background. Me? Yeah, I love that song. Love I can that hear song. an old key then, and you know, in the background, waving his wand around frantically to the uh, <laughs> well, to the orchestra. <laughs> That's what's missing from Eurovision: the orchestra. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Yeah, it's it's sort of. I mean, Johnny Logan. I was. I was chatting to him the other day about about Eurovision, and and uh, and he just doesn't like the modern kind of no. Eurovision at all. No, he's not into that kind of thing. No. He just, he, you know, he likes to have a big a big band behind him. I think. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, I was also talking to Linda Martin as well, and Linda said she won't go back into Eurovision on, um, on, on, on unless Johnny Logan joins him uh, in the duet. Yes. And so. Uh, I know she we, got herself into a bit of trouble last year. She got into a, we a, need, a handbag fight with some other... We other. need that orchestra back on the stage. <laughs> Unfortunately, it won't be Ronnie Hazelhurst, because he, bless his heart, he passed on a few years ago, didn't he? He did. He passed on a few years ago, bless him. Yeah. What and, a wonderful and, man. You know, he's one of the characters of Eurovision, wasn't he? Yes, he I certainly know, was. I mean, there were some over the years. There was he some, certainly was. Now, yeah. you being Irish, can you can uh, do you see where I'm coming from with those dedicated St. Patrick's Night? Um, where where one half of the crowd they want a normal night, you know, a normal music night. The other half of the crowd want all Irish music, and you can't please either of them. Well, you can't please all of them, but but I suppose you know, I think most pubs now they tend to have, uh, you know, they'll have any kind of a night on just to have a, a bit of a piss up, really. Won't yeah, it? yeah, you know, yeah. and. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's any excuse at all for a piss up these yeah, days, whether it's St. Patrick's if, Night or whether it's St. George's or whatever, you know. And um, I think I think everybody joins in, really, doesn't it? Yeah, so. If you have, um, uh, uh, if you want a band for St. Patrick's Day, you're talking serious money, serious. You're talking thousands if you want a band. You I really suppose, are. Yeah, you'd have to. I don't know. I suppose the traditional Irish music is, is sort of is you know it's losing momentum now. It's just not not there anymore, is it? No, it's, no. Uh, I don't you know. Think so. I think they just tend to you know they just tend to get somebody who you know plays a violin and a, yeah. a fiddle or or or, uh, or a melodion or something like that. Yeah. And they just <laughs> something like that. Just uh, give it some kind of uh, uh, an ease up, you know. Oh but well, I think you might do a good job, Chris. You know, you might. Uh, you know, yeah, you never know. Good. Fingers crossed. Well, Tony, <laughs> Mister, lovely to talk to you, sir. Yeah, nice, nice to talk to you, and uh, and I'll, yeah, I'll speak to you again soon at some stage. And it's been a while since I've saw you, isn't it? It's been such I a while. I haven't since seen you since we saw the Blitz, Chris. Last saw you. Okay, cheerio, Tony. Okay, yeah, have a good day. Yeah, bye bye now. Yeah, bye now. Uh, bye. That's Mister Tony Pa. He writes uh, songs for Eurovision Song Contest, um, and he hopes to write one that wins one day. I mean, wouldn't that be something to actually write a song? I do know. Um, <clears throat> a couple of the people who have sung in Eurovision uh, represented the country. One was Nikki French, and we actually had her on the show here uh, a few, about three years ago, I think it was. Nikki French, who represented us with the song uh, Don't Don't Play That Song. Don't Play That Song Again. That was the song, wasn't it? Don't Play That Song Again. Right, we'll finish off with a few of these uh, messages here. Matt Martins says, Happy birthday to Brandon. Uh, Anne was saying... Uh, are you going to talk about your adoption story? Well, we did. We did. 
we did talk about the adoption thing um, about three or four short shows ago, Anne. So you missed it, dear. You've missed one of the shows. Go backwards, dear. Go back. Go back. If you ever miss any of the shows, you can find them again, gang, at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's where all the old shows are. Click on the Union Jack flag and you'll see them through that sort of bit there, OK? unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, let me see. Uh, Last of the Summer Wine is uh, was that uh, thing we were talking about there, says Wendy and uh, Anne as well. Is that all today? Let me just check. I haven't missed any missed any little messages out. I get very upset with myself if I miss anyone out because I, I kind of think to myself, you know, you've taken the time to send them in, so they must be read out. Very, very important. I can't be on too long because, because I've been summoned to Ronnie's house, you know, to bring his dinner over. What a liberty. Uh, finally today, I've got an email here from Angel, who's the manager at a pub called Halfway to Heaven in London. And Angel writes, Hi Chris, I'm furiously typing in the hope to get it to you before you start the show today. Well, it's here. I'm sorry you've had to wait till the end of the show, but it's here and here it comes. I just wanted to express my feelings towards award shows, like the one which happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 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 I completely understand your views on awards and these are mine now so my views on on award shows are they're just like backslabbing things that most of them are fixed i'm i'm convinced of that i think most of them are convinced and i think it's sometimes a show uh, just just uh, not for me not for me angel runs a pub and he says i enjoyed campaign campaigning for my venue to win making posters and videos and luckily for me we did win something well, I mean, we won a printed A4 sheet of paper in a frame. But it's not about where you come. It's all about the taking part. I think the whole exercise is a great tool for engaging with my customers, engaging with the readers of a particular magazine. But most of all, it's about having fun with it. I took my whole team with me on the night and it was a chance for us to bond outside of work for them to dress up, to let their hair down, and we really enjoyed ourselves. You didn't seem too drunk to me, Angel. I don't think I've ever seen you drunk. You're very well behaved. Very well behaved. I hope you're well. I'll be listening to the show on Monday uh, when counting stock, because he downloads this show, because you can download the audio-only version of this, uh, or you can even subscribe via iTunes. That's audio-only, all free. Just type in United Kingdom Talk and you'll see it there, OK? If you want to subscribe and then it just comes down onto your podcast thing. Uh, we'll try and pop along on Monday to your karaoke night. Yeah, come along Monday, Angel. You still haven't been to one of my karaoke's, have you? Angel has his own karaoke night. Another bloke does that. But you must come along to my little karaoke night and, um, and, and that will be very nice. Thank you. All right? That's it for the show today. Well, we didn't get on to... Um, some of the other stuff, as as often happens, okay, because people called in, but that's okay. We don't mind because I shall do that in the shows, in the little shows next week. All right. Uh, once again, if you fancy the idea of a late night show on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, sort of one o'clock for an hour, one o'clock Wednesday morning, please let me know on the email, Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk, and uh, we might indeed try one of those. All right. Have I missed something? Checking, checking. Nope, haven't missed anything. Thank you very much. Have a lovely Saturday. I guess she'll be disappearing up to my sisters a little bit later on uh, for Emily's christening, my, my niece. A very, very quick visit. I'm not even there for an hour, uh, for, for 24 hours. It's a long drive up there. I hope she reimburses me for the fuel. I will have to ask my niece to, <laughs> to pay me for my fuel. And one more impression of my cat to leave you with today. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you for a short show on Tuesday. Remember to where to find them? UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk Ta-ta. Meow! Meow! Meow!